18, consider nitrous acid, which is HNO2. And they give you a hint. It's actually laid out as H-O-N-O, so HONO. Anyway, letter A. We have to write the Lewis structure. So I'm not going to read B and C just yet because we have to write the Lewis structure before we do anything else. So we have to write the Lewis structure for nitrous acid, and I'm going to use this little hint. That's how the elements are arranged. So I have a nitrogen that's bound to two oxygens, and one of the oxygens has the hydrogen. Okay, so we have H, O, N, O. Okay. Doing the Lewis structure, we always put the valence electrons on each element. So periodic table's out, right? Hydrogen is in group one, so that's only got one electron. Oxygens have six valence electrons because they're in group 6A or 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll do maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. Nitrogen is in group 15 or 5A. So it's got five valence electrons. So I'll say one, maybe I'll do one, two, three, four, five. And now each one of these gets one single bond and just see who has the octet. So dot to dot, one single bond, dot to dot, two single bonds. We have another single bond down here. And seems like this hydrogen is good because hydrogen only wants to have two electrons. This oxygen has the octet, two, four, six, eight. So I'm not going to touch these bonds. This nitrogen has two four, six, seven electrons, so it needs one more, and this oxygen has seven as well, two, four, six, seven. So I'm going to make that double bond, and now the nitrogen has two, four, six, eight, and this oxygen now has eight as well. So letter A is done. Now, letter B. Letter B says, what are the electron pair and molecular geometries of the internal oxygen and the nitrogen atoms in the HNO2 molecule? Okay, so we're looking for electron pair and molecular geometries of the internal oxygen. Internal just means the oxygen that's inside and the nitrogen. So there's only one nitrogen, so we're obviously going to be focusing on the nitrogen. And the internal oxygen, I have two oxygens here. Can you guess which one is internal? This one. It's inside the chain, right? Do you see how this oxygen would be the external oxygen because it's on the end? This one is the internal one. So those are your two elements that you have to do letter B towards. So we just have to find the electron pair and the molecular geometry. So let's just set this up. Electron pair and molecular geometry. All right. And technically this is called electron pair geometry. So let's do the oxygen first. Now it's, it's probably easiest to do the molecular geometry first because the molecular geometry is the, the most, uh, specific geometry for whatever you're talking about. And that's why I put this up here, because we're going to be using this chart to figure out your electron pair and molecular geometry. So your teacher or professor probably wants you to memorize all these. So I'll just teach you how to use the chart. So for oxygen, we just look at what's going on around oxygen. Now in this chart, we have the central atom of a, right? A is all around in the central atom. And that's the element that you're talking about. So technically the oxygen would be the A. Now oxygen, it seems like it has two bonds to two elements, right? It's got one bond to H and one bond to N. And that's what it's representing here. All these A's, the central is bound to X's. X just means it could be any element. It doesn't matter which one it is. In this case, it's the H and the N. So it looks like it's the A bound to the two X's. And now you just got to put those 
lone pairs on them, right? Oxygen, you know, has two lone pairs, so I'm just going to add them in. So this is what I'm looking for on my, you know, my sheet here, but on your test and quiz, you probably have to memorize what they look like. And let's see, I have two X's here and my A in the middle, but I only got one lone pair. So that's not it. This is the one. I have my A in the middle surrounded by my two X's and two lone pairs. Since we actually have the lone pairs, that's your molecular geometry. So your molecular geometry in this case would be bent or angular. It doesn't matter. I usually go with bent. It's more prominent. Now your electron pair geometry is literally the one that doesn't have the lone pairs, but you still have the same amount of connections. So your electron pair geometry is all going to be in this category only. So since I'm over here, but I just need to show that these are technically like bonds, that's this. And the electron geometry would be tetrahedral. So oxygen is done. Let's just erase this. Pause the video if you need to write it down. I'm just going to erase this because I want to get ready for the nitrogen. We need the electron pair geometry and the... Um, electron pair geometry and the molecular geometry. And we're going to go straight for that molecular geometry. And then we're just going to dial it back to get the electron. So now nitrogen is going to be the center element. So that's going to be represented as the A. Now, how many elements is that nitrogen bound to? Well, it's bound to two other elements. Now, I see that I have a double bond here, but I don't see any double bonds in this diagram. It does not matter what type of bond you have. The only thing that matters is how many elements are bound. So since the nitrogen has only the two oxygens bound, it's still classified as just X and X. Now, nitrogen only has the one lone pair, so... I'm just going to put that down. Nitrogen doesn't have anything else, so we're just going to go based off of this. And I just scan here just to see what's the one that has the two X's with the one lone pair. And that is this one. The two X's with the one lone pair. So this also has the same name, even though they look different. So electron pair geometry here would be bent or angular. And maybe I will. And this is the this is the molecular geometry. So I'm just going to bring this down. And then actually, I think I have room. Now we just have to dial it back just to see what the electron pair geometry is. So now I go back and that's in the trigonal planar. So it seems like their molecular geometry is exactly the same, but their uh, electron pair geometry is different. One is tetrahedral, it's got four things, and the other one is trigonal planar, it's only got three. So pause the video if you need to, I'm just going to erase this, because we're finally done with B, and now we're on to C. Now letter C says, what is the hybridization on the internal oxygen and the nitrogen atom? Okay, now this is coming down to here, this is what we need to know down here. Hybridization, there's five different hybridizations, and these are just the number of orbitals that are coming together to form the overlap between the bonds that you see here. And the hybridization, the S's and the P's and the D's, they all correspond to the total number of letters that you see. So for example, for SP2, you have one S and two P's. P2 means you got two P's, and there's a total of three letters. SP3, you just tackle on a another P, you got three P's plus one S, so that's a total of four letters. And the number of letters always corresponds with the number of things that are going on around um, the, the atom, right? So two letters, two things, three letters, three things, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know what happened here, but that has to be back. Okay. And then what classified as one thing 
Well, one thing is either one single bond, one thing is one double bond. So even though you have two lines here, it's still classified as one thing. I got one triple bond. So even though there's three lines, it's still one thing and one lone pair. So for the oxygen, how many things are around the oxygen? Well, this oxygen, the internal one, has one single bond. That's one thing. It's got another single bond. That's two things. It's got one lone pair. So that's three things. And another lone pair. That's four things. So in this case, for the oxygen, you have four things. That corresponds to four letters. So in this case, the oxygen has sp3 hybridization. Let's do the same thing for the nitrogen. So I'm just going to get rid of these just so that, oop, oh boy, what's going on? There we go. So now we focus what's going on around the nitrogen. Well, the nitrogen has one single bond. That's one thing. I see it has a double bond. Even though there's two lines, that's still classified as one thing. So I have two total things. Lone pair, three things. So three things. Three letters, SP2. And that's it. Letter C is done, and this question is done. What do you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and thanks so much for being here. I really hope this is helping you guys out. Let's keep learning. I'm so proud of all of the success that is coming your way. I'm, I'm here, I'm, you know, we're getting tons of comments saying, how this channel is helping you out with your tests and your homework and your, you know, your quizzes. And I'm so happy that we can help you guys out. Let's keep learning. Always keep learning and tell your friends, tell your, tell your classmates about this channel. Thank you so much. And if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button. It just helps the channel grow. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers. It's absolutely incredible. And it's all because of you guys. So thank you so very much. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.